Hello, welcome to the Christian Outpost Podcast. My name is Dustin, and today we have a special guest, my friend Greg Carroll. Greg, say hey. Hello, Dustin. Thank you for having me. All right. So we're just going to go ahead and kick off today's topic. Um, we're going to talk about why lives matter. What's why? Why does anyone's life matter? Black, white, yellow, blue. And uh, this is a topic that Greg has come up with for us to talk about. So I'm going to leave him to kind of kick us off. Well, thank you, Dustin. It's something that's been in the news unless you on a secluded island. You haven't heard. Um, the news is racked full of Black Lives Matter sports, mm-hmm. entertainment. Uh, yeah, the anger towards All Lives Matter. Right, the, the, just the statement, all lives matter, is now considered um, racist and bigoted. And the question, uh, and, and Dr. James White, uh, and I'm not getting paid to plug him, <laughs> but he has a, uh, a dividing line podcast and video cast as well. And he, someone had actually pulled a little minute video of his clips and and it was titled "Do Any Lives Matter?" And I thought, that's yeah, that's that's a we need to ask that question. And we, as I was thinking about it, and you you know you had asked if any topics, and I gave him a book full, or actually a long list full. Yeah. And um, this one this one was the one that uh, Dustin chose because I think of its immediacy. Yeah. The the question is. Why should we care about anyone's life? Why? What happened? Well, let's just get this out of the way, because this seemed to have been the the the, the trigger for uh, what's going on in our cities. I don't think that's the I don't think that's the continuation of it. I think that was the trigger for it. But the, what what we all saw happen to George Floyd was wrong. It was murder. He's actually, Derek Chauvin has actually been charged with murder, uh, amongst other things. And he was a bad guy. And not, not I'm, just to set the groundwork, people have looked at that and said, black people in America have been treated unfairly and a lot of other things that have happened in our society, police killings and brutality. And, and it's awful. No one's justifying that at all however the statistics show that unarmed white people have been shot more and killed by police than unarmed black people and so there's the question we shouldn't be having this issue of it's black versus white the question should be why is this happening but it's become such a divisive issue based upon the color of someone's skin but the broader the larger issue is, what does it matter if any of us are shot by the police? Why is that important? Why why shouldn't that happen? And, and from a Christian worldview, we we hearken back to God's word. We look at uh, Jesus in Matthew twenty two. They say, Master, what is the greatest commandment? He says, "This to love your Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and right. strength, and you are to love your neighbor as you love yourself." Love yourself. So there's. There's our authority. It comes from Scripture. And when you have an organization with the name Black Lives Matter, the, no one, I don't think any Christian disagrees that a black person's life doesn't matter. I don't, I don't think you'll ever find anyone anywhere that claims to be a true Christian that would deny anyone the right to life. As a matter of fact, that right to life extends not only to the black person who's an adult, but the black child that's unborn. Absolutely. And I think that's why some people get offended, you know, that all lives matter. They're saying, no, you're denying, by saying that you're denying, you know, this person and their uh, oppression that they go through. Mm-hmm. No one's denying that. I mean, people are oppressed all the time. There's there's sections of California and sections of New York, New Jersey, and even in Charlotte, places where I cannot walk at night. True. Just because of the color of my skin and I understand that. And, and and is it wrong? Sure. Maybe, maybe. But for me, I, I'm not going to let that dictate how I view them as an image bearer of God. 
exactly. It, when it when it comes to worldview, we we're right to say that lives matter. Mm-hmm. We're right to say that unborn lives matter. We're right to say that toddler lives matter. Yeah. Uh, if someone is alive, their life matters. Where, where I think that we can come in as believers and as the church is to start just asking questions. You know, my one of my favorite professors had the, he loved the Socratic method, which was ask questions. And I think a lot of times, and not that I've ever been guilty of this, Dustin has, I'm sure, but not <laughs> not, not me, <laughs> is you, you want to rush in and you want to give the answer. When to open a dialogue, you start asking questions. And the first question is, is why does your life matter? And certainly, why would anyone's life matter more than another? Well, if you say that a person's life matters more than another's based simply on their skin color, you have to have a foundation for believing that. You you have to have a reason why, not just to say, well, because I've been oppressed and, you know, my ancestors were in slavery. Well, my ancestors, uh, you know, help wanted Irish need not apply. I mean, if we want to play this game, we can all go back in history and find, and, and in fact, you know, I'm part Cherokee Indian as well. So they told my people to leave North Carolina and go to Oklahoma. And uh, I've never been to Oklahoma. I've seen some pictures of Oklahoma, and I'd take North Carolina any day. Uh, but especially Tulsa, but that's a, that'd be a topic. <laughs> that'd be a topic for another discussion. And some of you, you can go ahead and laugh, enjoy that. But that's the, that's, that's one of those inside jokes. But uh, but from a from a biblical Christian worldview, all lives have matter because God says they do. He He's the one that defines us. He's the one that gives us dignity. And the opposing viewpoint is an evolutionary viewpoint Mm -hmm. which says that we're all just a bunch of grown-up germs and actually a a uh, highly evolved spawn scum yeah a phd actually made that comment that we're all just grown-up germs (laughs) and and we're just we're just electrons neutrons uh bumping into each other and if that if that's true then there's no point in complaining about who dies how they die because we don't have any inherent worth, and I'll give you I'll give you an example. Uh, I would, and this is I understand it's anecdotal, but it, it's I think it could be il- illustrative of some things that people have encountered. When I was in community college, there was a guy, and we, he was in my biology class, and I had a night class, and he was working like a third shift, so he left class, went straight to work, and he was having a real bad time. And the uh, professor, she she was like 27 years old, so she was younger than me. Yeah, I went to school late. Late. <laughs> Every, everything, everything I've done in my life was slow. Um, but you anyway, were just well-seasoned. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah. I, I always say I'm not stupid, but I am slow. I, I will admit to that. Um, and anyway, we had, you know, the, the discussion about evolution, which uh, she, well, does anybody in here believe in evolution? does not believe in evolution. Well, of course, I had to raise my hand, and there was another girl who raised her hand. And so then she went to the girl first and then come to me, and I just answered by saying, what do you mean by evolution? And that's not a cop-out. We we do need to know what people mean by that. And Mm -hmm. she said, what do you mean? And I said, well, if you're talking about small changes within a species, eye color, hair color, then... We call that micro evolution. Mm-hmm. It's and not I macro. Said, then yes, we all agree on that, or or it, it's observable. Yeah. And I said, now if you're talking about a monkey coming from a salamander and eventually coming into a human, I said that's macro. And I said there's no obs- observation of that in in science, and no, it's not true. Well, then she began to pace in front of the classroom going, I didn't come from a monkey. I didn't come from a monkey. I came from my mama and my daddy. I came from my mama and my daddy. (laughs) And she repeated that several more times and then began to, in the next section, teach molecules to man evolution. (laughs) So 
uh, and what had happened is we had a break, and this guy, he he come after me, I mean, with claws, man. He was absolutely irate, and he said, how dare you? Don't you know that that's true? And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. slow your roll, man, slow your roll. Calm down, calm down. And I literally, he literally needed to be calmed down because if not, I'm, he might have punched me. Mm-hmm. And I may not have turned the other cheek either. I, I may not have been as sanctified as that. But, <laughs> but anyway, he, we got him, we got him calmed down. And I said, why are you taking this class? Which completely, he, he just stopped in his tracks. And he said, what do you mean? I said, why are you taking this class? And he said, and began to talk about how he needed to get a degree to get to this job that he wanted. And I said, why do you want to do that job? And he said, because I enjoy doing this, and plus it play, pays more. And I said, okay, so according to the evolution that she's teaching, according to the evolution that you believe, you came from nothing. Right. And I said, and when you die, you're going to nothing. Right. And I said, please explain to me why you're spending so much time and energy trying to be something now. Exactly. And he, his face dropped. We began a good conversation. There were a lot of things going on in his life, which precipitated the anger. He was mad at a God who he said didn't exist. So, yeah. But what happened was is that just opened the door. And, and I think a lot of times if we'll ask the question and just press them, you know, as Gary DeMar, I learned from him, was how do you account for that? How do you account for that? Whatever answer they get, how do you account for that? As you said earlier. It leads back to an ultimate authority. There you go. You have to have an ultimate authority for what you believe. And, and, and the worldview is, is that world authority the scientist, the expert? Is the authority myself or is the authority God? That's right. So I had a, a discussion yesterday, and it was on the uh, morality you know, what's moral. This person comes to me and, you know, they say, well, you know, I decide what's right and what's wrong. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, there you go. There's there's the ultimate authority. You've, you've put yourself in the position of what is right and what is wrong. And then I said, well, what about slavery? And they're like, well, that's wrong. I was like, well, is that a moral objective? Is it morally objectively wrong? He said, no. <laughs> and I said, at least you're being consistent. He said, it's subjective. Moral is subjective. And I said, no, it's objective. And you know it is. But to be consistent with your worldview, you have to remain subjective. And what I mean by that, if for those people that don't understand those terms, so he's saying that slavery is an objective moral. Or I'm saying it's objective moral. He's saying it's subjective. So the people that went and captured these people and brought them into slavery... I can say that's wrong because the Bible says that is wrong, and it's Absolutely. actually condemned by death. Yes, uh, it's it's a big, big sin. Um, God frowns upon it highly, but the consensus of society at that time was that it is acceptable. And there's actually still parts of the world today, especially in the Middle East, with uh, sex trafficking of yeah. people, children, women. It's it's horrible. But to them, they have put themselves in the authority to say. This is good because I find pleasure in it. Exactly. It's and it's not pleasurable for the people who are being put in through that torture. So I told him, I can say it's wrong and it's always been wrong. Right. And you know it's always been wrong, but like I said, to be consistent, moral is subjective to the society. So at one point in time, slavery was okay. Now it's wrong. Well, if society dictates what's moral, then then how do you have any kind of moral alt? Like, how can you say that this is wrong? How can you be consistent? Because you never will be, because the world is always constantly changing. It is progressively changing, right. um, heading towards a path of destruction, if you ask me. Um, well, it's it's the criticism of the Christian worldview is that you believe a Bible. <laughs> we don't really know who authored that, or it was written... X amount of years ago, and it's outdated. Forget it's, the names of the titles of you know these letters. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's if it's so outdated, then why do you hate it so much? Uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That is our ultimate. It starts with God, a God who is transcendent, a God who is outside of space and time, a God who is omniscient, a God who is holy, which. 
that bothers us more than anything because a holy God will one day hold us into account. We don't, when you're, when you were you talking that earlier, it was, uh, you know, who dictates the rules. It's I dictate the rules because then I will have to give an account to myself and not someone Mm -hmm. else. And that's that, I think that is why it's appealing to us as humans, sinful humans as well. And then too, I, I went to tell, you know, there was a podcast that we were actually listening to and conversing on, and the one guy that's on the podcast, he's 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 brilliant. He does wonderful visual effects works. I, I like to watch a lot of visual effects and mm-hmm. media type stuff. And but he has a worldview that he has to appeal to. Yes. And his worldview says that love is a chemical exchange in your brain. That when I look at this person, this woman who's attractive. I find her very appealing. Her emotions and demeanor matches mine. I should devote myself to her, which there's a lot of issues with that. I, I would I would say, would you ever tell your wife that? Yeah. Because because he's married, mm-hmm. and I'm like, if you told your wife that, you'd probably be sleeping on the couch. That oh, honey, you know, um, the reason why I married you is because you're visually appealing and your uh, emotions match mine, and I'm compatible. How romantic. Exactly. Yeah, it, it, it is, you know, and it's laughable when you think about it, but there are universities um, that are run by people with this worldview. We have people in government who are who run by this worldview that it truly is the strong will survive. And if they have to trod on the small to get there, so be it. And, and in our country, and this is this is something that the left in our country really doesn't want to talk about, is that the eugenics movement did not start in Germany, Nazi Germany. It started in America. Mm-hmm. They carried it to its logical conclusion with the Nazi Party, and that was with Margaret Sanger, wasn't it? Absolutely. And and here recently, Planned Parenthood has disavowed Margaret Sanger. <laughs> they were not going to have her name on. It. But we're going to still do what she planned to do. We're just not going to have her name on it. Well. Gee whiz, let's, uh, how, how wonderful that is. You took her name, but you're still going to fulfill her destiny. Yeah. And, and Planned Parenthood is one of the most racist, bigoted organizations because that's how Margaret Sanger set it up, was the annihilation of black people, that she did not want them to reproduce at all. Anyone who was inferior, whether it be uh, disfigured, uh, right. mentally mm-hmm. incapable of things, people who are handicapped, right. they were to be euthanized. Yeah. And um, if any of y'all look up Margaret Sanger in her interview, this woman is scary. Yes. I mean, I've never been afraid of a woman, but, man, I'd hate to have been standing next to her because I was afraid the lightning's going to come down. It's that bad. It's absolutely horrendous, some of the things that she said. And I don't know how you can get an organization that says – Oh, we're for your right to choose life, or your your right to to start your family. That the the planning of your parenthood, right? Yeah, it, and they put them in, in in minority sections of town. They put them in the. If anyone can hear that, there's thunder outside, and it's very loud. That was that was loud thunder. <laughs> yeah, it's ninety some degrees outside, and it's very humid. But no, um, and there I go mentioning lightning and Margaret Sanger. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um. Yeah, they put them in neighborhoods where people are in poverty. They put them in minority communities, and, and that's the whole push. They push this upon them because they're the ones, oh, you you, uh, you have six kids. Can you really afford a seventh? Right. Yeah. Right. Like, well, I don't know if I can or not. It's kind of rough. But, you know, people had like 10 and 12 kids back in, you know, the early 1900s, and they didn't have half the stuff we've got today. And, and just to, just as an illustration for, for Margaret Sanger, in 1914, uh, she promoted a, a contraception using the slogan, No Gods, No Masters. Ooh. And this, this woman was a vile woman. But, and this is another thing. There's so much, and I'm not going to get, I'm just going to use it as an illustration, not get off on a tangent. But we're so ashamed uh, at least the uh, elite in our country are so ashamed of the Confederacy. Well, guess what? Margaret Sanger is a part of our, our history, too. I'm not very proud of that. Uh, I don't think we ought to to make her 
disappear into the shadows. No, I, I think we ought to learn about her and learn what she taught, what she believed, and how her influence is still being felt today. Well, those that deny their history are doomed to repeat it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, you were saying, you know, she said, you know, the no God mm-hmm. thing. It, and this comes from Proverbs chapter 8, verses 35 and 36. It says, and this is King James, it says, For whosoever findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. How true that is. How true. Our cult, our culture in America, and, and don't get me wrong, I, I, I think our country is the best in the world and if you've done any traveling overseas, you would have to agree with that unless you're uh, graduated from UC Berkeley. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's another inside joke. Um, however, we are, with all of our problems, all of our things that we just wish we could change immediately, it's still the best. But we, we do have a culture of death. Um, we have abortion, obviously. Unfortunately, we have states, Oregon, Washington, uh, moving, uh, if not wholeheartedly, but at least half-heartedly into euthanasia. We had, uh, and I, I, I forgive me for making, I, I'm not trying to be political, I'm just stating the facts. Obamacare actually did have what uh, Governor Palin called death panels. It, it was in there, and uh, Ezekiel Emanuel, actually, I've seen the chart. It's not like it's hard to, to come, you could Google and everything you Google yeah, yeah, now. Yeah. And and it was the filter of your information. <laughs> from from birth to five years old, the line on the graph was flat. And at five years old, then you started becoming worth something. That you were actually they were what? actually putting a price on your life. I am gonna have to look that up. And it it, it tops out about fifty five and then it starts to trend down. And what the danger was, and, and I had numerous, numerous conversations with people that I worked with because I was called a bigot and a racist because I did not vote wow. for, for Obama. And, uh, and I said, listen, if what he's talking about, I said, it's fine when it's somebody else's grandmother. Yeah. What about it's your grandmother? I said, you want everything done in their power to save their life. And I said, what's happening is there's a price put on your life at your age with your con- medical conditions. And I said, some bureaucrat sitting in Raleigh or in Washington or, or Atlanta or wherever the, uh, the Southeast regional is going to be, and they will determine whether your grandmother gets that heart transplant or whether your grandfather deserves to have that open heart surgery. Depending upon the... Yeah, you know, I mean, he's lived 68 years. He's had a pretty good, but, you know, if we do this, it's going to cost X amount of, what they're, they're putting a price on people's lives. Because in their worldview, that's what a price, that's what a life was. Based on what is your production, what is your, what you can you contribute can do to society. Mm-hmm. And once that starts to lessen, then your life becomes, wow, sounds an awful lot like communism to me, <laughs> but I, it's just me. I mean, I just, I just graduated from community college. I mean, what do I know? But, but it, it is there again, it goes all the way back to your worldview. And I had a patient the other day, I'm talking to her about, you know, what we're doing and what we're actually going to be talking about. And she was kind of interested and, um, she was a black lady mm-hmm. and I told her, I said, we're going to talk about all lives matter. And she said, uh, or why lives matter. And she said, well, that's good. You ought to be talking about that. And I said, I said, you and I, we don't know each other. This is the first time I've ever met you. And we started talking about the Lord. And I said, you're my sister in Christ. And I, I love you based upon that right. alone. Uh, if you need me to do something for you right now, you're here. I'm going to do it for you. You need anything, I got you. But I told her, I said, I've been listening to some of these things that people say in the media. You'll have people who are hating on the Christian church. Yes. They're, they're pronouncing all this hate, and yet they want nobody to show them hate. Mm-hmm. They, they, they're, they're saying that you you did this wrong to me, the people that you have these statues of, these people that have been in uh, positions of power long, long ago that didn't affect me, they're the reason why I am the way I am. Right. And I'll be honest with you, I did not grow up in a mansion. I didn't grow up in... The, the the wealthiest neighborhood. I didn't have 
all the things that I wanted as a child. I was I didn't get everything that I wanted, and I don't know what the pre, the preconceived notion is. Just because I'm white, I have this privilege right. mm-hmm. that no one else has. Right. And I'll I'll be honest with you, Cobble County is not a very rich county. I mean, we've got our we've got our parts and places where people make wealthy income, but just because of who I am and my my faith, people would look down on me. And I told her that one of the things that I was looking up was Vody Balcom and him talking about uh, the rose garden. Mm. He says when God walks out into His garden, and I'm paraphrasing Vody, and I love this man to death. He's a he's a very devout Christian, very very good man of God, powerful preacher as well. Yeah, he, 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 he comes out into his garden, and he sees all these different roses. They're different lengths. They're different. They're cl- some are close to the ground. Some are above the others, and there's all these different colors. And it doesn't take away from the beauty of the rose right. because the rose is a rose. And when he looks out into his garden, he sees all this array of color. It's all beautiful because it's made what he wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. And I, and I looked at her and I said, you're made in the image of God. Yep. I am to show you love and respect because you bear my Lord's image. Mm-hmm. And she said, that's that's wonderful. She said, I, And she said, I feel the same way about you. And I said, I don't know. And, and she's an elderly lady. I said, I don't know if anything's ever been done to you or ever been said to you. I just want you to know if they said they were a Christian and they were mean to you just because of your skin color, I dare say they probably aren't saved and they shouldn't be calling themselves a Christian. Right. It's, well, the thing that, uh, opp- that, that's the thing, is oppression, mistreatment. I wasn't alive, you know, 200 years ago. Mm-mm. And I know from, and I'm talking about my dad who, uh, who died eight years ago. Uh, he was raised in Yancey County, and he was a sharecropper. And we're not talking about the 1800s. We're, we're talking about last century which I know if you were born in this century, that seems like a long time ago. I was, I was born uh, in 1973. My dad was born in 1944. And we're talking post-World War, uh, World War II, rather. And he was a sharecropper. And things like that went on. And I remember him making the statement that he said, son, we didn't know we were poor because everybody else was just like us. Mm-hmm. And... And my grandfather, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to get into all of the, the family history, but my grandfather was not a nice man, and that's putting it lightly. And he actually just shipped them out, not only to, to do their own work at home, but he just shipped them out to do other people's work. He, that's, they didn't get any pay for it. Mm-hmm. And, and my father didn't get any gifts for Christmas or birthday or anything like that. If he, he said, if we got an apple and oranges at, at, at Christmas, we were doing good. Okay, at the same time, my dad didn't instill into me that, son, this was wrong what's happened to me, so you're supposed to go around and blame everybody else for what you decide not to do or how you decide to live. I, I do believe in individualism. I do believe that God gives each of us gifts, and I believe that, we're going to stand before him one day and give an account for what he gave us in the town. Ta- I mean, think about it. You look in, in, in the, the world of the unbeliever. They are talented. Oh, yeah, have, and intelligent. Absolutely. They, they have it, all these gifts. Yes, and, and where did that come from? Did that spring just from them? Did that? No, God gave them these gifts. There's some people who just have what we call you just got the knack for doing that, mm-hmm. or you know, you could do that in your sleep. Yeah, I'm not saying that we don't hone those skills and that people haven't honed those skills, but there's a bend in someone's character, in their DNA, if you will, that this is what they want to do, this is what they're good at, and they do it. But it's like Paul said, we worship the create creature rather than the creator, yeah. and we did not glorify God. Yeah. And that brings us back full circle. If we don't start with God, we're liable to end up exactly where we're at right now, claiming I'm better than you. No, you've oppressed me. No, you owe me. No, you don't know what you're talking about. You need to listen to me. No, we all need to bow the knee to Christ and listen to what, what he Christ has to is say. Proclaiming. That's right. Mm-hmm. 
Because the last time I checked, he's the only perfect one ever walked the earth. So yeah. tends to have a tad bit of authority when you do that. Yeah. Um, I see people on a day-to-day basis, and uh, I think back to my childhood. My very first friend, he, he was a little black boy. His name was Dominic. We went mm-hmm. to daycare together. I still remember him. I did not understand or even perceive that he was different from me other than it looked like he got a, he's got a better tan than me. Right. And, and, and children inherently don't see race. They just see another kid, and they play with them. Right. And there's something about that innocence mm-hmm. that people lose, I guess, over time, uh, bad experiences, and they attribute that to a race or to, a, 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 in this day and time, a gender or any other thing that they want right. to come up with. It, it all harkens back to why does it all matter? Why do I show love? For my wife, why do I do these things? Why do I use my talents to, to do uh, music editing? Or why do I use my talents to public speak? Why do I do these things? You're supposed to do these things for God. Right. It, it's supposed to be a reflection of what he's given you to show his, to give glory to him. And um, I think one of the main examples that I saw of people doing this uh, a sermon is this little clip that I got of voting. I think it hits the nail on the head, and and it's and it brings everything full circle on why we are to treat our neighbors right, why we are to call to love everyone, no matter shape, size, or level of development. Right, uh, a person is a person, no matter how small. I like I like that Dr. Seuss quote. Yeah, it has a lot of truth to it. But here's here's a little message from Vody. It's just a minute long. Actually, in Ephesians one through ten, we get the picture of our need in Christ for salvation from our sin because of the world, the flesh, and the devil. We're dead in our trespasses and sins, and we have to be made alive together with Christ. Amen? And that's just good news. We, we must be born again. We, we must have our sins dealt with. Our sins must be nailed to the cross, and we must be reconciled to God. Amen, hallelujah, praise the Lord. But it doesn't stop there. We are also reconciled to one another. And that's what we see beginning in verse 11. That this reconciliation to God opens up, lays the foundation, and is the source of our reconciliation to one another. Not sociology, psychology, or political science, but the same gospel. Amen. That's, that, that's a, a succinct a way of putting it as, as can be. That's in, in the scriptures... It's, you know, you you hear the, the apostolic preaching, especially in Acts, when Peter says that God does not show partiality. Mm. It, and thinking of how that portrayed or how that was heard by a Jewish culture who thought that we were given Ten Commandments. Moses, and in fact, they even told Jesus, you know, Moses is our father. Mm. You know, we're the children of Moses. We follow Moses. You, say, you know, God could raise up rocks right now to be children of Moses. You do know that, right? And, and the apostolic preaching was that we, in Christ, if, if Dustin and I, if, if his last name was Hatfield and my last name was McCoy, you know, that is also taken care of in Christ. It's not just that, well, he's right with Christ, I'm right with Christ. You know what? I ain't hanging around him because here's what he did to my family, and he's thinking, I'm not going to be around Greg from what he did to my family. As Vody just points out from Ephesians, we're reconciled to each other because we have to be. Yeah. If we're reconciled, if our biggest problem is that we are in the eyes of a holy God, unholy, our problem is with ultimately with him. Okay, if that one gets taken care of in Christ, which it does according to Scripture, ours, ours should be pretty simple to get over. But and that that's why the you hear people. Uh, in fact, the 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 baseball player uh, has gotten himself in some trouble because he did not stand 
or he stood rather than kneeling during for the Black Lives Matter. Mm. Um, and I, he's 27 years old. I forgot his name. Uh, I apologize, but you can Google it. That's either go either use duct tape, go to the scripture, or Google it. I think that's our three answers <laughs> for everything right now. Um, he they asked him. They said, "Why didn't you kneel?" He said, "Cause I'm a Christian, and I I kneel for nobody but God." And he's not said, willing to say Caesar is Lord. He said, "I would feel like a hypocrite." If I knelt for this, mm-hmm. he said, when I'm a Christian. And they said, well, you, you should, if you're a Christian, you should be with black lives. He said, I've looked at their mission statement. I've looked at some of the things they espouse. He said, they've got some Marxism. They are negative towards the the, uh, the nuclear the family. Nuclear, yeah, mm-hmm. thank you for saying that. I didn't know where I was going. <laughs> negative family, uh, the <laughs> nuclear family. Uh, and he said, I just could not do it. And he is getting tore up online by fans uh and i'm sure these people are christian that are saying if you're a christian jesus was for justice jesus was for and it's like whoa whoa wait a minute folks but that's where we are in in our culture that of course as as rush limbaugh says america is not twitter uh and so i think there's a lot of truth in that and and christianity is not the american version of it it's what the scriptural version of it is, and anything that deviates from scripture is not is not script is not not Christian. It's, it's not theonostos. Right. That's it, right. If God it's not breathed out by God, then I and then it doesn't have a place. Absolutely, absolutely right. And and that takes the the human error out of the element. Absolutely. Um, when you're reading scripture in the context, you're you're taking into account who's the writer, who's the reader, and when and when was it written. Right. And when we we stay in line with that, it's really hard to be in error. Right, right. And, and and we've had you know thousands of years of church history, and as R. C. Sproul was was uh, often to say, if in your study you come up with a meaning that nobody in the history of the church has come up with, you're probably wrong. Yeah, you might want to keep it to yourself <laughs> and, <laughs> instead and, of pronouncing those things. Yeah, and and that's the same thing that we're seeing. With with the Black Lives Matter, it's and and here's the I think the pernicious thing of it. I really do. You said earlier there's not a Christian, a true Christian, who would say, uh, "No, only Asian lives matter, mm-hmm. or only Hispanic lives." No, all lives matter, and that includes Black lives. That includes the unborn. That includes why anybody. Uh, but what they've done is they've taken a, a sentence or three words. And now they have co-opted it into something that I think the family of George Floyd or the people who really did have an issue with police corruption and brutality never intended. But now it's, okay, if you you either bow the knee to this or we're going to make your life miserable. We're going to dox you. Yeah. We're, we're going we're gonna to call you a Karen. Yep. We're going to call you all sorts of hateful, mean names. And then we're going to say you're the racist. Yes. Because you're white. Because, right. Mm-hmm. And the hypocrisy is just, it's instantaneously. And people that live the lie cannot see the truth. Right. right. Well, and, and, and there goes back to Scripture where Paul says their hearts being darkened. Yeah. They cannot. Cannot. They cannot see. And I, that's, when you said when we go to Scripture in context, in its historical context, in its provenance, in its... The, the, the writer, the reader, that's where it, it has to check my temper. <laughs> Traditions. Because, because I want to get mm-hmm. angry and say, how dare you do that? But the Bible says, Greg, they're doing exactly what their father tells them. Exactly. And this is a hard saying, but the Bible says if you are not in Christ, you are of your father, the devil. Yeah. And the devil came, as Jesus said, to kill to steal, and and to destroy. And ladies and gentlemen, a Christian, and a a, a Christian mom on top of that, is not out in the street at 3 in the morning throwing frozen water bottles at the police. And shooting off firecrackers and calling them racist bigots. And and words that we will not say on this air. Uh, It's using all kinds of foul language. And that that is not Christian. And there, I think in in our 
Constitution allows us to assemble, to redress our grievances, to peacefully and peaceably, but it does not give us the license to go out and destroy other people's property and to try to intentionally harm people. Uh, and, and anybody who does that and then throws a barb at someone else and says, well, you're not a Christian, I, you sort of let that go in one ear and out the other because that's the, uh, the, the pot calling the kettle uh, a piece of cooking utensil. Um, <laughs> the pot called the kettle black. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I thought I thought the pun. Yeah, the pun not the, was, that's not the pun you were yeah, going yeah, for. Yeah. You you started down that path, and you're like, and half, <laughs> halfway. I thought, you know, that's probably not the best pun to use. But <clears throat> hey, I told you, I'm not dumb. I am slow. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's actually going to tie into uh, the next subject we'll talk about. Hopefully, if not next time, in the future, yeah. um, the view of justice. Yeah. It, it really prevocates into that next that the next topic that where this would flow, but where I'm already out of ideas and out of time and well uh, just just <laughs> just to just to tie that in, uh, I think I think we can tie that in with, okay. with today's um, topic is why do lives matter? It's because God Matters. created yeah. us and God gave us inherent. Dignity, because we and and you you of course are, are familiar with the phrase the imago dei. Mm-hmm. We we are the image of God, and I've actually had people ask me. So, well, Greg, does God have hands? And and it and it's not they're they're not being facetious. They're not being you know jerky about it. They literally don't. Um, they think the image is what we see. The image of God is that we know the difference between right and wrong, and we can do right or wrong, and we're held accountable for mm-hmm. right or wrong. Uh, a, a funny illustration, and uh, I'll, 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 it is funny, but it makes a point, but it's, it's funny, is that in that same biology class, there was a, a black guy from Asheville that was in my class, and he's he looked at me and he said, Greg, are you all right? And I said, if she doesn't stop, Talking about this, I said, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go home. I said, because it's been a long day and I'm not listening to this. He, he started laughing at me. And he said, what do you mean? And I and so I told him, I said, where where we went to community college out, there's a big old pond. And it's full of ducks and geese and and a few swans. And, and I said, everybody thinks it's so cute when the ducks go waddling across the road. And all the cars stop. And I said, and the, the ducks defecate, defecate in the road. And everybody thinks it's so cute. And they laugh. And go, oh, look, there's the ducks. And I said, if I get out there and I defecate in the road, I said, nobody thinks it's funny. It's cute. They're going to call the cops <laughs> on me. And he's like, man, you ain't right. And I said, but do you get my point? He goes, we, yeah, I had never really thought of that before. But, yeah, it makes sense. And I said, she say, I said, oh, if there's no difference between us in an animal, then why would I go to jail and why does everybody laugh at the duck and think it's cute? Yeah. It's because inherently people who don't have the Christian worldview borrow from the Christian worldview in order to make their point. And if we begin with God, we'll have to end with God. And as and as Dustin mentioned about the justice, there if God is our creator and he is, God's the ultimate lawgiver and he is then he's going to be the one that we're ultimately accountable to. And the last thing that we want from our creator is justice. I don't want to be treated fairly. No, sir. No, I don't sir. I don't want to be treated fairly. I want I want someone else to take that punishment. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I and and, and like Vody said there at the end, it's it's about the gospel, how it unites us. Um I don't you haven't said this yet, but you you don't come from a Baptist background. No, no. no. And I, I do, and, and Chris Chris doesn't come from a, a Baptist background, but, you know, we have people that we look up to who are Presbyterians. We have right. people that um, that I've looked up to that are independent fundamentalists, mm-hmm. and there's all these different denominations that we can look at. And the centrality 
that we need to get behind as a church, as the bride in our country, most definitely, is to get behind the gospel. Yes. And we need to carry it out everywhere, sow the seed everywhere. We don't care if it lands on the rocks. And it looks like there's a lot of rocks right now, and yes. there's a lot of thicket. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't look like there's a lot of good ground, but it's out there. And the harvest is plentiful, and the labors are few. Right. We need to go out. If you're hearing this today, if you're listening, you need to tell someone about the hope that is within you. You need to tell them why you have this peace, why you have this joy in dark times. And it is dark times. It is. I, and and I, I hearken back to the sermon that you gave uh, a few months ago. You said we're being judged right now. Yeah. All this, All this you see right now, the people engaging in homosexual activity, the people claiming that they're that they're not what God made them to be. Right. I, the man that says, I'm not a man, I'm a woman, right. just like you were just showing me earlier. Um, that right there is the judgment. Yeah. yeah. It's it's when it's when God says, Okay, do you want to live in a world where I have no say? Do you want to live your life outside of my parameters? You know what we get? We get chaos. We get destruction. We get hurt feelings. I mean, I, if you're familiar with Answers in Genesis uh, and Kim, Ken Ham, uh, there was a book. Uh, they did an Answers book. They've, it's gone through a couple of editions. And then Creation Ministries International did an Answers book. And one of the things that they... It's, one, it's just a cartoon, but it, it makes such an, an, an mental image is that it, sh- it shows the church and they're shooting at the flags that are raised on the human. It's, it's Christianity and human secularism. And they're shooting at the flags and the flags have uh, pornography. The flags has abortion. Flag has euthanasia. And the, the church is shooting at that. And it shows the secular humanists shooting at the foundation of the church, which is Genesis. Mm. It's shooting at God as a creator. And if if I may make such a humble, I think, and I say this from my own background, is I was woefully ill-equipped from the church that I grew up in uh, to deal with the issue of evolution as cre- as dealt with, especially in college. Uh, is definitely in high in high school as well, and that's exactly what's happened. Is we allow these shots to be taken at our foundation, and we're shooting at their flags. When we when we shouldn't shy away from our sword, we should grasp a hold of it even tighter. And and God is our creator. That's why our lives matter, and that's why the Christian worldview makes more sense than anything else does. Well. If you don't have God in your knowledge, you're reduced to a fool. Yeah, that's right. That's what Scripture says, yes. But I think we've got enough ammo in the can. I think so. <laughs> but anyway. That's, 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 a, that's a, a Christian outpost speak for Greg. You've rambled long enough. <laughs> no, no. I, <laughs> hey, if it didn't take me this long to edit, we'd keep going. <laughs> I've got things I've got to edit out where I paused and... I'll make these little noises and things in the background, and people will hear it. And like, I think I think a thirty-minute episode takes me two hours to edit. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I clean it up, decibels, everything. But um, yeah, if you're listening to this and you've only listened for seven minutes, and I know you're only listening for seven minutes because I can see how long you've been listening for. I put a lot of time and effort into thirty minutes. If you could just go another ten, I'd greatly appreciate it. Anyway, we're gonna sign off. There's uh, links into the description to the music, all the stuff. And if there's any references that you want me to put in, I'll put them in at the end. Um, please share this, like it, subscribe, and uh, just tell everybody about the gospel. I think we get back to that. We're going to be in a lot better shape than we are in now. But Definitely. we love y'all. Thank you for stopping by, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you for having me, Dustin. Anytime. <laughs>